Wrigley from Springfield, and I am joined today by Academic from Niles West. Academic, say hello. Hello. Welcome to the stream. It's going to be a great day, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun match. We've got a matchup between two of the best teams in the IHSEA. Last year's state champ and defending title winner, Ka Patterson, is here from Salem Community High School down south. And the highest scoring duo in the IHSEA this year, Diz and Red Hydras from the central part of Illinois and Chatham Glenwood High School are here. Uh, representing their side of things. This is a matchup between one Stone Conference team and one Metal Conference team. So this is really going to be the best of uh, each side matching up against each other. Earlier today, we saw Springfield take down Niles West. And by Niles West, of course, I mean the one person who almost single-handedly took down Springfield uh, Academic. What was that match like having to play a 2v1 today twice? It was... Uh, I I know I think the, the first match I played as a solo today, I almost actually won it. We went into the third game with me having a five kill lead, but things just didn't work out. It was close. It was fun. I can't get mad. It was close. The whole season was fun. So, yeah. Yeah, that match was against uh, the, the 10 or the one o'clock match rather that you're talking about was against Diz and Red Hydras. What did you learn from sure. them playing that match that you think we might see in this one here? I think... Their match was, I think they played very well overall. They do know how to counter strategies, like multiple strategies that I've seen throughout the season entirely. People who follow, they know how to counter entirely. They know how to just counter everything. They know how to play exactly. So I think we'll see that this match, I think we'll see them pulling out the best strategies we've seen all season. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, Ka Patterson, this uh, the defending state champion, uh, has a new partner this year. It is Pure Love instead of Spotty from last year. Um, he's back with a different partner. He's incredibly good, and I can tell you guys from playing against him at four or at one o'clock rather that they just keep scoring. Like there's, it, it almost seems like there's not a point in the game where they are done scoring, and they're constantly in the kill feed, and that kind of messes with your psyche. Because mentally you're like, oh my god, I have to score. Like there's there's so many points that are going up, I have to keep going. Uh, and so I think that'll be interesting to see if that pressure makes Hydras and Diz make bad choices or at least get overly aggressive. So uh, we're on board with Diz's perspective here for this match. Um, I can't wait. It's it's this is what it comes down to. These two teams have scored a lot of points. Uh, who's your pick to win? You've seen them both this season. I think it's going to be a close matchup. I think Patterson, Patterson and Love are going to clutch out, but not by a few, not by many points. It's going to be a very close matchup overall. Awesome. Well, here we go. We're on board with Glenwood's perspective in this match. Kip Patterson and Pure Love have elected not to stream. Uh, they are playing from home, and as I'm sure uh, the non-Chicago people can imagine, internet speeds at home aren't always the best. So they're uh, choosing their right to just play and not stream it uh, so that they're not sacrificing their gameplay and we can have as good a match as possible. Diz doesn't land initially where he wants to, but goes elsewhere. This is not a common landing spot for a whole squad, I don't think. You are hearing the comms of both Red Hydras and Diz. We'll check in with Ka Patterson and Pure Love if we can throughout the match tonight. But Glenwood's perspective is what you'll see. He's playing on some degree of stretched res. We were talking about that right before we started tonight. Uh, definitely something I hate, uh, but a lot of players seem to like it. Have you played stretch res before? Do you like it? What's your thoughts on this? I would say, it, in some uses, I hate it, but a lot of the time, I swap to it sometimes just purely for the input delay. Although recently, I found that the new season had input delay at the start, not really anymore. It's, got, it's gotten better, so I think overall, I, I wouldn't use it, but it makes sense why people do. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to have to adjust the overlay slightly. There we go. So that it works with the stretch res, because uh, it was set up to be on standard. So now we've moved that a little bit, and it looks much nicer. Oh. No Elims yet, already a fourth of the lobby down. It does look like they're not able to find anyone, it, although they will be taking a rift now, using the Colossal strategy. I've seen that earlier today. A great strategy is using the rift to Colossal lets you view almost a fourth of the map. You yeah. get to see into Tomato Town, you get to see South, North, going into Pleasant. It's probably one of the best rotations you could have. Yeah, and it's a strategy that Kip Patterson uses a lot. Meanwhile, Diz, the first to find company. Guy by himself will be an easy knock for Diz. He doesn't miss these. 
Where is his team? He decides not to shake him down. Interesting. The shaking down actually is something that's sort of a double-edged sword. There's both of them. There's all three of them. He gets one. He gets two. And Kip Patterson was able to steal one of them. Or rather, maybe he wasn't. That See, it's weird that there's the last guy. So, I did think they he got the kill as well, but I guess he was able to get away. They do have overall six kills across the board. Diz having three of them. I have, I have a lot of. I believe, yeah, the ticker top right is actually incorrect. It kind of glitches sometimes. The kill in their menu there said three one one one. So I think the score right now is four to two. Correct. The ticker on the top right has been bugged for a long time. Something yeah. I personally wish Epic fixed, but I don't think it is going to be fixed in the future, uh, near in the near future. Although I do hope sometime it gets fixed, as it's something that is really annoying for some people. Yeah, it seems like such a small thing, and it's been wrong for so long. Can Epic, like, that's, like, come on, Epic, fix this. This is, this is obvious for us. Maybe they'll fix it in the future, we don't know. It does look like, though, Patterson is far away from everyone else. He's, he's near another kill. Tony Burbs. Yeah, they're rotating into Colossal now. Interesting choice to rotate back. I believe they might try to buy a Rift if you're able to. I actually don't know if you're able to buy multiple Rifts in one game. Although, I believe you actually could, so I think they might try to buy a Rift. Gold. Yeah, so it looks like they might try to buy a rift and then rotate back to Uka Patterson to try to steal all of his kills. As it looks like he may be able to get a few kills by himself if no one stops him. That's the thing about these kill races. There's essentially, as we've said, uh, yeah, four to three the score right now in favor of Glenwood. Essentially, there's two strategies to kill races. You stick on people and you choke them out and prevent them from getting elims and just try to 50-50 things and hope that you win more often than not. Or you split up and see who frags bigger. And But the thing with the fragging and splitting up is it is heavily luck-based. You can be super good and just not find anyone. On the other side of that, you can certainly make an argument that you create your own luck in Fortnite. You know what rotations are going to find people. You know where people like to land. And you're going to find company if you land lazy. You're going to find company uh, and, and uh, tilted. So these players that you know sort of get to the quarterfinals or don't quite get to the playoffs and sort of say it's oh it's rng i just can't find people well you can make choices that help you find people more often so uh that is what both of these teams have done all season and that's why they've scored as many points as they have what i will say is that i believe this is actually one of the best times to split as if you're playing late at night or early in the morning most likely you'll only be versing people who are pretty good at the game to actually know how to play together as one big thing about this is if you find a squad that knows how to play together you just can't win unless if you get very lucky or you just get a few 200 pumps it's really hard to kill a full squad who actually play together yeah diz does get one here but just a moment ago we saw that kill feed light up with Kip Patterson's name he's actually taking the lead and with that shake now they know where the rest of the team is pure love has joined them i think Kip Patterson uh, is still far away though he's just doing his own thing he, yeah, he's just by himself, looking for kills by himself, which honestly will work out in my opinion. Although they do have a rift in Lazy if the NPC is still here, so they could rotate anywhere as soon as possible. One of those points went to pure love there. So, And this is something I heard Kip Patterson talk about against Springfield. They were thinking, uh, you know, do I just separate and let pure love deal with Orozco and, and Nixie, or, or do we try to stay on you? It's... Uh, again, it's a double-edged sword. Right now, the move to separate from the other three seems to be working, and Pure Love is siphoning off at least one Elim each time they encounter somebody while Patterson's out there doing his thing. But Diz is tired of that, and he's going to go get him. Looks like he's about to get a bounty from the bounty board as well. If he does, he should be able to get the kill with no problems from the other team. Oh, he looks like Guess it looks not. like he skips the bounty board. Yeah, no That's an interesting in that. choice. Pure Maybe love is the pink it. arrow on the screen. He's right behind Diz. Where is Hydra's at? They have eight, we have seven. We're down by one. It's nowhere to be found. Looks like he's actually going trying to go to Kapetterson. Maybe try to meet up. I don't know why this kid is on. Yeah, Diz and uh, Pure Love about to get to Kapetterson. Red Hydra's though, not even on the mini map. Kind of far away. Doesn't get that chest. Didn't get the bounty board. He's it seemed he was really invested in getting to Patterson, but now he's just taken off and is back in Colossal area. Yeah, it looks like they don't have much interest of meeting up while Diz and Diz and Love. It looks like they want to stay together as much as possible. Both strategies working out well, but Patterson looks like he is getting a lot of kills by himself, so his strategy may be working out a bit better than Diz's strategy with Love. 
There's another. He, there's the kill feed. Could Patterson keep showing up? It looks like he's about seven kills right now. Yeah, seven kills. That That's amazing, personally, in my opinion. He has seven kills by himself. That's three more than what Diz has. It looks like he can maybe even get a few more as he's far away from everyone else. Gets another kill. <laughs> that's eight and two. Salem with ten right now. And seven for Glenwood. So a three-point lead for the Wildcats. Kip Patterson and he's really just getting even more. To... Yeah, he literally, he's just uncontested. And he's just better than everybody's running into. That's all it is. It looks like he knows what to do by far the best out of everyone here, especially as the returning champion. Yep. It yeah, looks we... like he really wants this two times in a row. It was a really long day today with how many matches we had and what the schedule was like. And so there was plenty of time in between. We got to scrim with you. We also got to scrim with Kapatterson. And uh, I'm seeing right now what he was talking about. This was his plan to deal with you. Uh, because if you are an ex you're an extremely high-scoring player, you and your partner put up big numbers all year, he knew that uh, Diz and Hydras were also a high-scoring duo. And this was his strategy. It seems to be paying off thus far. But Hydra's picking up one more and uh, makes this game a little closer. Looks like Diz is about to launch off. Oh, looks like he tapped back in. He's launching off as Love gets a kill. Looks like Diz is now by himself. Love is nowhere to be found. He Love is actually on Hydra's right now. Yeah, this is interesting actually, choice to try to steal some kills. It's actually so interesting that we, we don't we usually see them all as a group of four or two groups of two, but we haven't very frequently seen one, one, two with the squad split up. And that's what's happening right now. The two carries are by themselves trying to find any sort of elims, and then uh, their teammates are with each other. I think this is going to work out well better for Patterson, especially with them already having more kills. And this not being in the best spot to look for kills right now. He will be going south. That will be good for him, but in his current position, it looks like Patterson will find way more kills. Diz has plenty of shield, but he doesn't have any whites. And really, his inventory isn't anything spectacular. Uh, he's got to find some better options as they get closer to this endgame, or he just will be outmatched. Especially with eight teams remaining, there's surely at least one team who know what they're doing. If they find Diz, I think Diz just dies. He doesn't have a blue pump. He can't do 100. He doesn't have a spas. He can't one-shot someone. He only has a green AR. He can't knock someone with an AR. So this is going to be interesting. Meanwhile, the other three have grouped up. It's only Diz by himself now. They're all in bony right now. I think Diz... I don't know what Diz is doing, quite frankly. I don't think he'll be able to find anyone here. He might find one or two standalone players. But apart from that, I don't think he'll find anyone on this rotation while Kip Patterson, Love, and Hydras, they will be finding squads constantly. Yeah, and with two Wildcats and one uh, Titan over there, the numbers are going to go to Kip Patterson and Pure Love more likely than not. Especially with them probably having better loot. Kip Patterson gets another knock now. You can hear the frustration in Glenwood's voices. They're just, they're just like, you heard Red Hydra say, man, he just stole another kill. That's exactly what Kip Patterson and Pure Love are looking to do. That's how you stop a high-scoring team, is you just get busy and, and get in their face and make sure that they have to deal with you trying to steal kills, not just them farming on bad players. It does yeah, change how you play. As long as they keep this current lead of a few points and they keep on doing the strategy, I don't think there's a way they could lose at this point. If they get a 5 to 10 kill lead going into the second game and then just do the same strategy, there's almost no way for them to lose. Yeah, it is 16 to 10. This is definitely shaping up to be a high scoring match overall. And that's not surprising whatsoever considering who these two teams are. Both of these teams, uh, Kip Patterson and Pure Love, scored more than anyone else in the stone conference and uh diz and hydra scored more than anyone in the middle conference so this is the two highest scoring teams uh the unstoppable force meets the unstoppable force type thing it looks like Diz finally found some people he's able to almost get a knock here oh, oh but he actually back. loses all of his shield oh, he died oh he got knocked oh wow oh hydra's is here to save him he might wow. get finished now Oh, Hydra's clutches up. That could have been terrible for them. Hydra's was one shot as well. Man. Only having around I mean, health to his name. Oh 
Yeah, yeah, you can hear the anger in their voices right now. They really want this, but they can't seem to find anyone. This is the first time they've been able to, uh, Diz at least has been able to find people in a while and he gets knocked. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that is something that I'm not surprised to hear in their voices. You see conversations these players have with in the IHSCA Discord chat. You know the personalities of these players. Diz and Hydras don't see anyone as someone that they can lose to. That's just how they talk. And when it got to Championship Saturday today, we really had eight teams that if anyone has a great day, they can just win. Everybody was good that was left. Um, you were a perfect example of that. Like, there will be conversation after this about what would have happened if Academic had his partner. You were so good all day. And frankly, you're the only person that I think could have beaten us or Glenwood, who you played, by yourself. You were that good. And so these teams, they just have to realize that on Championship Saturday, that humility is so important. And when you hear that frustration, it's because they are not used to being down. They have been clapping people all year, and here they are really struggling for the first time. Yeah, all these teams, especially Diz, he's been done well all season. I believe he only lost to... Uh... He only lost once last season, and it was a close match. Diz does find the final, or at least finds three of the final four people. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's trying to shoot them yet. It is four people here. Yeah, he's going to find company here. He's going to... Uh, can he knock one? He gets dropped down to 60 health. The Bloom is here. He does have plenty of minis. He's just popping everybody for their shields right now. Finally down to whites. Here comes Hydra's driving. Diz gets knocked again. This time, Hydra's moving in. Can't even make it happen. Hydra's does get one knock. He actually knocked him out with a really small fall damage. It was only 18 meters high. Hydra's has two knocks now. He's trying to take them all, all on by himself. He gets to crack one. He knocks one, one left. It looks like they may be able to tie this up from this squad alone. Yeah, Diz is gone. He's not going to be res. There's no point. Here come the Wildcats. Kip Patterson's got... The, uh, whoo, that was a quick transition. Let's get back in. Now we're here again on the cam. Uh, that was a quick change uh, of how that match was going. I didn't really expect to see Diz get knocked in that engagement. He had the high ground. He had the builds. I think he just peaked way longer than he needed to. Uh, but, yeah, Salem definitely with a lead. Now let me get a score update and see what the official score is heading into game two. You got to feel pretty good if you're a uh, Wildcat fan right now because uh, they've they've sort of stunted this high-scoring Titans team. We're getting a score update. What's the biggest takeaway from that game one for you? Is Have you shifted your opinion? Are you saying, no, I, I'm doubling down on my prediction? What did you see in that match? I think Patterson and Hydras will take this home, especially if they continue to play like they just have. They've been able to take Diz's and Diz's kill like all the time. This the few times he does get into fight in endgame, he gets knocked or dies. If Diz continues to play like this, I do not think they have much chance of coming back if it's a tie or if they're losing by a bit. If they're ahead by even a tiny amount, this may change my opinion, to be honest. Is Kapatishan and Hyde uh, Kapatishan alone? His strategy is either if they're winning, just if they're winning, just stick on the other team. If they're losing, split off. If Compassion has even a five-kill lead going into the second game or going to the third game, I think they win. Yeah, I think that uh, the, uh, unofficially the score right now is 20-16, to 16, Salem in the lead. So they have a four-point lead heading into game two. And like you said, I fully expect the Wildcats to jump all over Glenwood if they have a lead. I think the magic number usually is eight, that two-squad limit that you have some safety, and if you get an eight-point lead, if they did the exact same in game two they did in game one, eight-point lead going into game three, I don't see Salem losing because all they're going to do is land with Glenwood, follow Glenwood, get as many impulse bows or impulses or cars they can get so their movement is better, and you can expect to see them uh, take this. But 20-16, to 16, the score after one. going to go ahead and transition back to our player screen here. And they have all readied up. The wait times are a little long right now. They're kind of frustrating. I think I remember you commenting on that on your stream earlier, that you were surprised you got in in less than 40 seconds. Yeah, there's a 40-hour uh, estimated time, which was, of course, a bug. But just in general, the estimated the times, especially at this time, is not that great, which is why this is probably the best time to get a lot of kills. At 7 p.m. is about the time when, the, when everyone's playing the game. If you're playing at, like... 
12 a.m. or if you're playing at noon, you'll be finding better players as that's just the people who don't have school. That's the people who don't, you know, have a job. That's the people who just grind the game the most. You'll be finding them at midnight. Absolutely. So at 7 p.m. is a perfect time to find the worst players. This is when all the middle schoolers get done with their homework and have come inside. After yeah, they dinner. just have their dinner. They have their dinner done, have their homework done. Right. And they just come inside, play some Fortnite, and then they go to sleep in two hours, which is when the lobby starts to get hard. Oh, to be a middle schooler again, where the most important thing in your life and most, like, your biggest job every day was to get better at Fortnite. I wish. What was your middle school uh, game you grinded out back in the day? I believe it was... It went from... Half of it was... Actually, no, it, was, it must have just been FIFA, to be honest. Yeah. I think I played FIFA for a few years and then Minecraft for when I was younger. Nice. I think that was my uh, Madden and MLB The Show years. That's what I played the most during middle school. Uh, I was still playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 to date myself a little bit, the 2005 PlayStation 2 version. Uh, but yeah, that was when I was really into sports games, mainly Madden. Go Dolphins. I do think sports games get less fun than when you get older, just due to the nature of them. I agree, and I think it's also because they just release the exact same game with a fancier look every year. You know what I mean? At some point, 10 yeah. years of owning the same game. I mean, I've bought MLB The Show every year from 2008's uh, edition to 2020's edition. And that was 12 games that were all the same game. <laughs> Back to Fortnite, though. They land in the same spot. Except Patterson goes off by himself as expected. Yep. Love does land with them, though. It looks like he's going to try to take as much loot as possible so they have nothing to actually kill people with. So this GG, if if Love is able to take enough loot, this might not have anything to be able to split off from Patterson and Love with. As If he wants to play solo, he needs good loot. If he doesn't have good loot, he can't play solo. That's just how it is. And that honestly might be his only job right now. Get as much of the loot as you can. Don't let them get the good stuff. Uh... I heard earlier, uh, actually it was you, and now I remember who who, who it was that said it. You made a call that's like, I'm not even going for this kill, I'm just trying to get this loot when the guy dies. And you didn't shoot at the guy, you just walked towards him. And that's a perfectly viable strategy when Pure Love's job right now is to siphon off Glenwood while Kip Patterson goes and gets points. Yeah, one strategy I don't think I've actually seen from most people is if your opponents are about the same amount of kills you or ahead, one thing you should do is just let them die if they're in a fight. Don't steal their kills if they're both low, because having two more kills than them is much less important than them being dead, especially early on. Yeah, yeah, that definitely gets more uh, impactful the earlier in the game it is, for sure. Especially off spawn, it's like you can get three very easy kills, or one or both of your opponents could be dead, then you have an entire game to get 10, 20, maybe even 30 kills if you can find enough people. Patterson gets a knock. Hasn't got the finish yet. We'll keep an eye on that in the kill feed. It looks like Love is following Diz and Hydras right now. Yeah. They do find someone. Something I just noticed, Diz doesn't, Diz doesn't actually have a shotgun currently. No, he doesn't. And he doesn't have much shield uh, much shield either. He has only 23 shield with no extra shield to his name, only having a medkit and bandages for heals. Hydras got that knock. Okay. Patterson did get the finish. Guaranteed one point there. No, that was not a grief. Yeah. So here's a shot here. For those of you on stream watching, don't worry, that is not a grief. This is Whoa. all the shots now. Oh my. Oh, oh my he gets to knock to his name. No materials left. That's a weird I've ever seen one. Pure Love drops and immediately finished. Now here's the question. What does Kip Patterson do? How does that impact his strategy? Does he stay separate? Does he get back with them? What do you think? I think if he's close enough to an NPC, he'll buy a rift to just to get the card. As having Love alive is going to be a huge deal, especially only if his job is to steal kills. As if Love can steal only a few... Like If Love steals three kills and that's all... That's a six point difference because instead of Diz having uh, three, like let's say for example they have three kills, they have none, and now Love is three kills. That's a huge difference. Yeah, I think having they just made the difference up too. Yeah, like stealing two kills can be huge. 
It doesn't sound like a lot, but it could be the difference between winning and losing. Especially with these two teams as close as this is shaping up so far. Four points was the lead that Salem had after game one. Once we get a score check here, we'll see if that lead has shrunk or if it's been overcome or if they're tied. They might be tied because Patterson definitely has got one or two. It doesn't look like Patterson is actually going to go for the love card. Patterson is one. Byron, no? They're tied. It is five to one this game, meaning it is overall uh, 21-21 even score here in game two of our finals. Looks like Kapetishan will have to play the rest of the game solo as Love's card is about to expire with Kapetishan nowhere near the card. Yeah, I liked your thought about getting over there and would it be worth it to use a Rift to get to the card. I think it would have been if he had the opportunity because as early in the game as it is, Kip, uh, Pure Love being there would have been hugely impactful. Now, uh, I expect Kapetishan to join them and try to steal but even in that situation you got to be careful because these it's two you know two people versus one person they just put down more fire it's going to be really easy for them to get the elims and squad fights Kip Patterson might actually be better served trying to just beat players he's better than I would agree with you but I actually think if he just plays solo he will do so much better as it looks like Diz and Hydras haven't had a good rotation path the entire day no this has found almost no one so following them might just not be a good idea at all because if they find one person this gets the kill Patterson just has no more kills after half the game being gone but Patterson's now in bony he's going to look for kills as like if he gets a single kill that, that's more than this will likely get although they do find some people now yep here we go pushing up Woo. Oh, hydra's is one shot now yeah hydra's in trouble potentially these guys do not look that bad. Hydra's drops. Hydra's down. That is a huge. That is a huge deal because now that distinct advantage is completely gone, and it's just a matter of who can solo squad better. Now, if you're Kip Patterson, do you try to meet up or do you stay separate still? I wouldn't even worry about. I that. think both work. Although in this situation where Hydra's got down so quickly, I think Kip Patterson will try to stay away from these people as much as possible. As this is probably the good squad in the matches. Usually, there's only one to two good squads in a public match. I think this is the one that Kev Patterson wants to stay away from until yeah, end game. I agree. He is far enough away. He's not in trouble by this squad. It is a tie game right now. 21 to 21. Both carries are the two left. Oh, this guy's looking for him. Yeah, he does. This is only eight builds. Once here they we... find him, he can't do much. He can't. I don't know why he keeps hiding. They know he's here. Surely they know he's here. He misses his pump shots. Doesn't miss that one. Guys Almost down to white knocks him. Glenwood up by one. Can he survive this, though? He picks up about 200 materials from the body, which is huge for him. That's more than triple amount of his mats that he had before. What? This guy is not good. He's a bot. He's not building. This is missing a majority of his shots right now. I I've noticed about every single battle, uh, aim battle he's had so far today, he <laughs> hits only one to two shots. Yeah, look at that exchange right there as a perfect example. He's just not hitting anything right now. He is able to get the card, though, with only five seconds to left, by the looks of it. Yeah, that was a big pickup. So that may be a swing in the momentum later in this game. While Kep Patterson will not be able to get Pure Love up, Diz can get Hydra's up. He gets in the semi, and he is going to take minimal storm damage here as he gets out. If he does reboot in Boney, he does run the risk of the people in Boney keying him, rushing him. As rebooting is pretty much just a signal for good squads to rush you. Yeah, you'll hear everybody call out, oh, reboot's on, and then they just go get points. Here we go. Yeah. There's another knock. Make it a two-point lead for Glenwood once that is finished. He gets to finish as well. He has more company. Patterson's still nowhere close. Gets behind him. He third parties the guy. Three-point lead for Glenwood. He's not out of the water yet. Especially with only 110 total health. He could get one pumped by a gold pump or one pumped by any pump if he, it's headshot. He gets his wall stolen. He's trying to get away from it. Nice. Knocks him for all of his shield. Follows up. He gets another one. I do think Diz overall is a very good player if he's versing a squad. But he just can't find anyone. And his aim it hasn't been too good today at all. Yeah, his aim has been rough. 
That is an incorrect yeah. statement. They are currently up by four by our count. We'll check a score here in a second, but I believe they are up by four. This looks like he yeah. might be trying to reboot now. He's looking for it. Patterson gets a knock. Yeah, it's a finish. knock and the finish. There's a knock, though, to even it up. He gets oh. shot down to 124 health. Came out of nowhere from the corn, in fact. Finishes it off. Gets another. Diz putting some points down here. Oh, man. This is getting some free kills here. He's just gotten, what is that, three or four kills from possibly some of the worst plays I've seen so far. Yeah, ran into a pretty rough squad there. Gonna heal up. He has the big pot to get back to full health. And I will want a score check soon. I don't think he's close to the zone though, so this may be a bit rough for him. Patterson's 1 HP, he might die here. He gets a kill. Yep. He is actually so low. And you cannot... Yeah, he had a medkit it looks like, or at least a, couple, a flopper or something. Uh, you cannot give this Glenwood team a free game. You have to stay in it. I do think if Glenwood can get six more kills here without Patterson getting only one or two, I do think that may make may be the winning factor here. Looks like he's able to get the reboot as well as Spire. Yep. No loot for his duo though. Once he gets the reboot off. Can you tap the scoreboard? No. No. Uh, what? Let's see, 12-3, so it is 23 to 20, oh, math, 8, 28-23, Glenwood up by 5 is the correct score, 28-23, Glenwood. Ooh. Patterson's going to need to find more elims here. Do you think their strategy, Salem strategy, changes if they're losing going into game three, or do you stick with the same thing and say, "Hey, it worked before. Let's let's just let it work again." A hundred percent, they need to go back to their strategy in game one, or maybe be a bit more aggro as they were in game one. Although I do think it is an idea. It is a good idea if they want to both split. As if Diz, if, if Diz and Hydra play together the entire game, they only could find 15 people. If Capaterson and Love split, they find 20 to 30 people easily. If they kill everyone, it may be a free win. Yeah. Capaterson gets that Elim stolen from him as they're just southwest of Colossal. And they're all content to move back into Storm. There's 11 people left in the lobby besides them. Patterson wants to find him first, but Diz and Hydra's both ahead of him in this uh, rotation right now. Those look like Patterson does not have that much health. Only having 50 white health to his name with 50 shields. Yeah, he, he may be in a bit of, if he had it. Yeah, he may be in big of a, a bit of a pickle if if the team runs up on him. That's actually decent. Especially if he doesn't have that much materials to his name. Although, I, I can't imagine he doesn't have less than 500 mats. Cap has found a couple people. Someone drove out of Colossal in a truck. There might be someone. He's fighting right now. He's down to low health. He gets oh. knocked. This may be a big game for Days and Hydras now with that knock. 12 people left they could get a kill on. If they can get even five more kills, that, that would be huge for them. Yeah, I think if we're not mistaken, after that last Elim we saw stolen, it is now 29-23 Glenwood. So they're up six with the remaining, uh, what, 11 people. Uh, remaining, there's one. Oh. Gets the knock. Hydras gets knocked, though. Will they get pushed? They do. This is, the, this is the same team as before from when Hydras got knocked the first time. Oh, I think you're right. The same skins. Also the team that beat Patterson. And he gets, tries to steal his wall. He does. He gets the stare down, though. And he gets the knock. Two more points go to Glenwood. Make it a eight-point game, if we're not mistaken. Eight points in favor of Chatham. Well, there's that. All right, so Patterson is also gone. There are nine people left in the game with a nine-point lead. Uh, Eight-point, nine-point lead. We're somewhere in there. Uh, they do have a potential... He gets the reboot card, interestingly. 
Uh, they have the potential here to really blow this out of the water. Kip Patterson and Pure Love are just praying these other teams start shooting each other. There's, speaking of that, they're fighting right ahead of them. Here comes the third party of the century. They're looking to do it. They knock him out. Can he get him building around him, trying to avoid the third party? They just want these points. They have no idea what they're in the middle of right now. Looks like these players are not bad either. They know how to play together and they know how to edit, build. Yeah, Diz gets shot from the side. Not going to be a huge amount of damage taken from him. Red Hydras, though, got cracked. Diz gets a Nox Hydras again in danger. Hydras is down. Hydras down and so is Diz. Huge. He didn't get the points from that last fight because uh, he didn't finish off the team. So those points at the end aren't going to matter. I believe that Glenwood is up by nine heading into game three, though they may be up by eight. Uh, we will for sure get a score update here. Let me get that update. Uh, wow, a change of uh, fortunes there for the Titans. Now they have the lead. Diz playing better, missing shots less. Hydras, though, did get knocked three times there. Uh, what does Salem have to do to turn it around and try to clutch this up? I think in order for them to clutch up, they need to either split apart or have one, like a Patterson, go by himself find some terrible players, get some free elims, and then have his duo, have Compatriots duo love, just steal every single kill Diz and Hydra find if they do plan to stay together. Yep, we just confirmed 31-23, the score in favor of Glenwood going into game three. That is two full squads. Uh, both these teams have scored a lot more than that on a number of occasions, so I really think this is anyone's game still. Uh, but this is shaping up to be a very close match. This is one of those matches that will either end up very close or in a Chatham blowout, right? It's going to matter where they split, how they split, and who they run into, but that's why we play this game. So let's get back into the action and uh, see the conclusion of our season. We're going to know in 25 minutes who your state champs are, or less. This is the final game of the entire season, apart from anything else. This is the final game of the league, of the tournament of the division's final game, it's going to be a good one. I just know it. Yeah, the only way this is potentially not is if th the score's tied at the end of this in such a way that both teams scored the most elims of the match at some point. Uh, has that happened yet? No. We haven't had a single instance where that's happened yet uh, in the playoffs. We have had one regular season match where that happened, and the teams ended with a true tie. Uh, but in the playoffs, there will be no ties. And if that was to happen, we would go to a game four and get some free Fortnite. So uh, we will see what happens here. Are you sticking to your Kip Patterson and Pure Love prediction, or are you going to switch it? You get one chance right now. I I would I think th it's very close. I think Kip Patterson and Pure Love will clutch this out. We'll get a bunch of kills now. I think they know what to do in this moment. I think their experience helps. They've been here before. They've been down before. This is not their first time playing from behind in a playoff match. Uh, and and I also think that the early game is going to have a huge impact. If it goes really well for Salem early on, this Glenwood team will tilt. They are very tiltable. And so Patterson and Pirillo have got to start the momentum quickly. Everybody drops together. The yellow arrow pointing a different direction. Is Patterson going to split off? It looks like he's going to Orchard or to Colosseum, a Colossal. Maybe to get that Rift to jump on some to get some more kills instantly. As he can get two kills at like, two kills off spawn, instantly Rift somewhere else. Either go to his teammates or go to some other people who don't look that good. Get even more kills. That's maybe an instant four kills in the first four minutes of the match, which could be huge. Yeah. Oh no! It looks like Compassion actually lands at Risky with everyone else. He did. So they're looking to stay together. They can't stay together forever. I think maybe he wants to pull from the same loot pool and take some of their stuff while helping himself out, and then you might expect them to split off and go. Uh, that's something we saw earlier in the day where they land together, make sure there's nobody there for free points, and then they go and try to leave them in the dust. There's definitely cars here to get out. Yeah, I was going to say, with all the cars that spawn here, if you don't have a way to get out instantly, that's on you. There's what five six seven eight drivable cars every single time at risky reels you should be looted up shielded up with good loot within two minutes max and if you're not out by two minutes at risky you just won't get kills 
Absolutely. It looks like Kabatashan is already out of risky. He's trying to rotate out as soon as possible. I don't want to go in your car, bro. Here. I might be going towards Colossal to maybe get some kills and drift, as I said. Okay, Patterson, yep, he has split up. Pure Love is with Hydra's in the same car. Much to Hydra's chagrin. 60 people left. That number is dropping quickly, and Kapatterson and uh, Pure Love need to start getting some points before that gets too low. Something I just noticed, actually. This has seven minis, and Hydra has zero shield to his name. So that's just something I wanted to point out. I don't know why he hasn't dropped minis to Hydra. Maybe he just didn't notice. Maybe it does not. look like Love. It does look like Love is trying to get two discs to get some steal to steal some kills with Hydra's a bit far behind. Patterson with one so far, making an eight-point game. Yeah, he ten minis and his partner has no shield. Maybe not the uh, team effort here. And now he has a big pot. A big uh, adds a big pot to his name instead of you know dropping his minis. Finally, he's just them. He just Instead of giving them the Hydras, he, he threw he, them all over the place. He didn't even give yeah, them the Hydras. He looks like he doesn't want love to get them. Hydras is max shield now from the Slurp Truck. There you go. Another Slurp Truck that he's just going to destroy just so nobody else can have it. Pure love right behind him. Kapatterson off doing his own thing. And they're trying to leave pure love in the dust. And they're consistently going towards Pleasant, which hasn't actually worked out for them so far. It's worked out for me in the past, personally. But especially with no zone having Pleasant fully in it, I don't think Pleasant's the right idea. Here's Pleasant the problem is, too. Like Con. This is not the beginning of the match. So the people who are still here are the ones that won, meaning there's a higher chance they're good. Let's find out. He gets in his box all over him and manages to make it happen, but that guy had no teammates. He drops immediately. And looks like there's someone else he gets a crack on. And it looks like Love is now here with them to maybe steal the kill. Perhaps. Oh, he's trying to do that as well. He doesn't get the kill, though. No, it was Diz that got it. Yeah. It does look like Love... I don't know what Love's plan is now. They all are... None of them are in zone. What I actually don't think I've seen anyone do when they go Pleasant, which is very surprising, is go to the Jonesy NPC and upgrade their guns. Oh, wait. Looks like they might actually be... Nope, they're not doing that now. I don't know why you wouldn't, honestly. You, you know, gold isn't too big of an issue for me personally. You can upgrade a, to a Scar and a Spaz for only, what, 400 gold? And for something like this, it, it should be amazing. I don't know why he hasn't done it personally. He's just left. Oh, I guess maybe he's in a car with Love right now. Maybe he doesn't want to get out and be left. Only 26 people left. Glenwood has extended their lead. Patterson and Pure Love have got to start getting points. Uh, not out of the question. You needed 12 kills with 12 people in that 4 o'clock match, and you almost did that. Soloing, so... I, it's definitely possible. Patterson being by himself right now, although in only an extra bony, so he's not in a great position. Quite frankly, I don't think anyone here is in a great position in this match. Hydra's probably in the best position as he's somewhat into zone. But I, I don't see anyone here finding a kill in the next one to two minutes. Yeah, the no gas for this either. So uh, Diz has lost his ride here in a second. I think there's probably still another car here right next to him. Like he's, he's just leaving it, though. He's just going to aspire to use the zip lines. Yeah, I think Not a bad idea. A, yeah, you, might, you usually find people up here. You get a good vantage point, decide where to go. Definitely a good move. Still this, oh, actually, the number of players left has increased by one. We had a reboot. So people are not dropping right now. Well, that does mean it's just actual players in the game. As if it's AIs or new players, you wouldn't see them rebooting. I do think we'll see two to three squads this game be exceptionally good compared to before. We've only seen, seen about one team who's really good in the final 10, 20 people. I think we'll see two to three squads in the final 20 people who are actually able to kill this Hydra's love or compassion. Yeah, that is, it was an eight-point game heading into game three. One point has been gained by the Titans over Salem. It's two to one this game. So it's a nine-point Glenwood lead with 27 people left to get that difference. So there's your breakdown, everybody. The magic number not close yet. Glenwood wants to score more or at least see the number go down. If I'm not mistaken, Glenwood has not won 
a state title in anything yet. So this would be their first. Uh, they've been to the Final Four in a few different times, uh, but they haven't ever finished it. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see whether they're finally able to get that here. Hydra's gets like hit. Hydra been, he's now cracked. It doesn't have much much of his aim at all. It looks like he, oh, he's one HP now. That's huge. And he's being jumped on by multiple people. It looks like he will be down here. Yeah, Diz not close enough to do anything. He drops. That's impactful. Diz, will he engage? Because if he gets in there and dies, this is a free comeback opportunity for the Wildcats. I think he'll wait for the card till have about 10 seconds left to go in, which is what has which what happened before. He just sat, sat in cone, got one kill, and then got the card with five seconds left. That's a good team. Look how they're building. This is a good team he's running into. He knocks one. He gets hit for 26 shield. Picks up one more, though. So it's a 10-point lead for Glenwood now. Oh, Love is downed. Yes, he is. This could come down to Kapatterson versus Diz. Diz gets out. He's worried. He does not want to die. I got, I'm watch him Those, he doesn't want to die at all. He just wants to get the card. If these players play... Oh, Leah Love is fully finished now. Kapatterson takes a lot of health. He has no shield to his name. Diz running away. If Kapatterson falls, it is over. Diz really wants this reboot. He has a minute left, but those guys are camping it and sending a couple up. This is a good team. Look at the builds there, really protecting themselves. The bloom is real. If he turns his back too long, he's going to be in trouble. Cracks him for 40 shield. He gets cracked. has a fast. He gets, oh, 71 health to his name. This is big. He's running out of builds as well. Only nine builds left, eight builds. Oh, yeah, you're right. Only eight builds. That's huge. Make it three. He will not be able to contest this. He's got to kill the guy right now. If he uses any more builds, he is done for. Hydra's card only having about 20 seconds left as well. There's no way he could get it now unless I don't, if he somehow pulls out a rift out of his pocket, but that's that, just not happening. The guy in white, is, yeah, there's two of them. That is not who was up on him. He's exposed himself. Will he get shot? Crax, oh, they already gets knocked! They're down! Diz is down! Okay, it is a 10-point lead. 10-point lead for Glenwood, and Kapatterson is the only one alive. It was an eight-point lead going into game three. It has been two more points that they've made up. It is a 10-point lead that Kapatterson has 20 people to surpass. Oh, my gosh. More than half the lobby. This is going to be very interesting. All these teams look very good. They are fighting, though, so maybe there's only going to be one team that's good left and then a bunch of AIs. That's probably the best scenario for Kapatterson. Is he going for the card? With, Wait, what is he trying to do? With no... I think he's probably looking for somebody rotating into, into circle. I don't know about that. I'll tell he's you what. for the truck, I believe. Here's the, here's the math, guys. Kapatterson down by 10. 17 left. If he gets no other Elims before we see the number 10 on the screen for a people left, Glenwood has won. He adds a number every time he gets an Elim. We'll keep up with that as much as we can. I am a science teacher, not a math teacher, but I will try. Here we go. Kip Patterson with 17 people to get 10 Elims to tie 11 to win to defend his state championship for Salem. Glenwood has done what they're going to do. A very strange thing he's doing. I don't see why he's going towards Spire. Maybe he's heard some people in this area. Someone does die, so he, there's only 16 people left. He needs to kill 10 of them. That's... I don't know how that he's going to do that, especially with there being a lot of good squads and him being nowhere near zone. We're going to so turn it 16. down a bit. Uh, yeah, we can hear, we we can bring you that instead of Glenwood. They told us the wrong number earlier, so I'm not trusting them. It is uh, 17 left. Make it 16. Make it. Yep, still 16. That was it. That was the finish. So, whoo! I cannot imagine the pressure that Kapatterson is feeling right now. 15 people left now. He needs to kill two-thirds of the lobby. He sees some people finally. There's a Box fight. Box up and wood. I don't, is that a fight? I actually haven't seen a shot yet there. I think that's a fight. Let's listen in now a little more. He does have grenades. If he knows the proper strategy, he can kill all of them with his six grenades. Yes, they get... like, uh, one guy is running away from it at least. I don't know that there's anybody left. 14 left. One more. There he is. Oh, this is the duo that killed Diz. This is oh, someone oh, else somebody left. on the left. God, he's got to make a choice. This is tough. Whoever he chooses, he's at risk of getting third-partied. 
They're, they're swimming. swimming. There's here it is. People are for the taking. I think he's going to get to zone and then look for the person behind him. Yeah. As if he shoots now, he's gonna be in a two tick storm. That may be terrible for him, especially if zone pulls far away. And with forcing people left, he, he can't let himself die. No, he cannot. He is waiting and watching. I know, I know, I know. Just calm down. Oh, he's going for That's not what I expect. Oh, he only has a makeshift AR. Yeah, he doesn't have the weapons you'd like to have in a scenario where you are required to get 10. Here he goes. This guy's down for whites. Patterson gets the knock. But oh man. He's one HP to his name nearly. He only 11 health. He may be downed if there's one sneaky shot shot at him. Whoo, buddy. Uh oh. Taking a lot of damage. Going for the finish. He only is going for finishes because he needs the mats and the, and, and the weapons because uh, finishing at this point is a moot point. He has to get everyone. I think he's also looking for some white heels or a big pot as if one pump with and one even a primal shot with two shots can kill him. So I think he's looking for any heals from the finishes. There he is in the box. He pushes up, cracks him. He needs whites. It's a kill. A gold pass and a medkit. That's oh huge my god, thing. gigantic. Oh he's oh he's no dead. he's dropped. Glenwood just did it. They had enough points. Cap Patterson could not. Get what he needed at the end, and they will oh, fall. The sink That's one of the saddest ways to go to sink fish. Yeah. That may be the worst way to go, in my opinion. I, I could never see myself. I could never see myself having this happen. Oh my gosh, that's tough. But in any case, Glenwood has won. Here we are, everybody. These are your IHSEA top three. Third place went to Springfield. That's Orozco and Nixie. Second place to Salem. That's Kapatterson and Pure Love. First place to Glenwood getting their first championship in any IHSEA game. That's Red Hydras and Diz. It was a close one. Kapatterson had the opportunity, but he had a big ask with what he needed to do. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Academic, thank you for joining me today. That was a really fun match to watch. Uh, and I'm glad that we ended on such a high note in both our third place match and our first place match today. Anything you want to add before we head out of here today? I, I just want to say that this was a great tournament overall. The, the final four today, very interesting. Every single game came down to the wire. Most games, I believe, were very close until the final game, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Or every single game was very close, apart from maybe one to two. They only have, you know, a two kill, four kill difference. It was wild. It was a long season. It came down to who are truthfully the best players in the seat in the state. There was no doubt about that. Those final eight teams were nutty. Uh, and, and there were storylines today that came to fruition. So congratulations to these three teams for a very successful season, guys. Thanks for watching. The last Encore presentation of Fortnite this year will be Tuesday, May 11th. That will be the Fortnite event in the Olympics. And then the finals of all the games will be on the 16th. So tune in, get signed up, talk to your coaches if you want to play in those. I know we'll see Academic making a return to those zone wars. Uh, and likely most of these Fortnite players are really excited to be in a more creative environment as opposed to pub something. Guys, Academic's here with me. I'm Wrigley. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations, everybody. Have a wonderful night. And it's TiVo always says, do your homework. We'll see you guys.